Here's a more painful question. I listened to the uh, lecture on uh, forgiving someone who hurt you. But my dad had a very bad temper when I was younger and he physically hurt me a few times and my brother as well. Thank God he's not like that at all anymore. But I can't seem to forgive or forget what he did and it is holding me back from loving him as much as I want to. I would really appreciate some guidance. Thank you. How interesting that in every good question, there is the seed of the answer. Or as the expression goes, a good question is half an answer. You write that, thank God he is not like that at all anymore. That is really significant. You're thanking God that that problem went away. Are you blaming God for the problem in the first place? You're absolutely right. Thank God you're not facing that challenge anymore. Well, doesn't that mean that when you were facing the challenge, it was part of God's plan? So in a sense, what I'm saying is, you can forgive your father his faults without denying his faults. Yes, his temper was terrible and what he did was very bad. What did you experience? What is your fate? What is your chalik? What is your portion in life? What challenges do you have to face for yourself? Because of you, not because of your father. So the right attitude is, thank God. Thank God for the cure and thank God for the challenge of finding the cure. So a little bit, if you blamed God for the pain you suffered as a child from your father, but you got to blame God, just as you thank God that your father has changed and is not challenging you that way anymore. I think that will help take some of the negative feelings towards your father and um, enlarge the problem to something much bigger. It wasn't just him and you. There was something bigger going on. Interesting that Yitzchak was never angry at his father for taking him to the Akeda. Isn't that surprising? Because it was so clear to Yitzchak, this is not my father's plan. This is not my father's doing. This is God's doing. So I have to ask myself, what is God trying to tell me? And it turns out that by going, being raised up onto the altar, Yitzchak achieved a level of holiness that Avraham did not have. Which is why in a time of famine, Avraham was allowed to leave the Holy Land and go down to Egypt. But Yitzchak, even in a time of famine, was not allowed to leave the Holy Land. He was holier because of the experience at the Akedah. So Yitzchak figured out what was going on between him and God. Avraham was doing what he had to do between him and God. And therefore there was no, no damage to the relationship. 